The Fantasy Six-Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. <laughs> and A.J. Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth. What's up, bro? Not much, not much. I uh, appreciate the the bra reference. I'll tell you why <laughs> a little later. But uh, yeah, another Thursday, ready to pod. Get get some some football talk in instead of the mindless drivel I get at work. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So tonight is Redskins at Minnesota, and it is shockingly a tie ball game near the end of the second quarter, six to six. I mean, I, I came into this game thinking we were going to get a Kirk Cousins revenge game. Apparently, this is a Redskins defense revenge game because uh, the one drive I saw, they've sacked him twice. Uh, they've just been like, nope, screw you, Kirk Cousins. Not going to happen. Uh, but Thielen's out. Um, you know, I was looking at guys like uh, B.C. Johnson and Irv Smith to kind of step up and take a role, but they have zero catches, zero targets right now, so not good. Sorry to everybody I said start those guys this week. Yeah. Yikes. Um, I may have made a mistake. Yeah, I mean <laughs> – but, you know, you're looking at a Redskins defense, right, that's been terrible all year. Uh, I mean, like, we still have a whole half of football and change left in the fact that Vikings are getting the ball back here. It's with a minute 57 left in the in the second half or in the second quarter. So, you know, anything can happen. These guys can ball out. But um, I'm looking good so far, so hopefully it turns around. But... Uh, we got a lot of news and notes to talk about this week. No, no, like, you know, big strategy topics like we've had the last couple of weeks. It's just a lot to talk about, right, um, around the NFL and then, of course, getting ready for, for week eight. Uh, but before we do that, let's do our beer of the week. Mm, beer. All right, I will start. I've got Stone Vengeful Spirit IPA. Uh, it's a pretty, you know, it, it's a pretty solid IPA. It's got, a, it's got a lot of flavor, honestly, you know, it's brewed with, uh, you know, pineapple and mandarin orange. Uh, it's, it, to me, it, it's a little kind of, I don't know. I think I may have made up this word, but kind of fragrant, you know, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's, it does like when you, when you drink it, it's kind of tastes like tastes like it smells if they, if they don't know it means. does that make any sense i am drinking potpourri right and i, I, I love think it. that's i think that's what i mean like right is but it's still good man i still give it a four yeah, yeah um, I, I get what you're saying so there we go of, we stone vegetable spirit yeah. ipa is Here's that the one the like maroon magenta color can it's the uh so i've got the bottle but it's uh it's or, like yellow and purple like okay, so that's, the front. that's different then. It's good stuff. I, I was looking at a stone when I went to this, the beer store today. Uh, shout out Christos, Glen Burnie. Um, I can't. I, it was a diff. It was like a new double IPA, like something about movies or whatever. Oh no, that that's a great beer, dude. I've had it before. I, know exactly what you're talking about. I was, was really torn one. on trying to get it. I was a like, phenomenal one, dude. I'm I know I had it. Decent amount of uh, like there's BC Johnson, I think. I think, by the way. Speak of the devil. Number eighty one. BC Johnson got the first pass. There we go. He heard me talking. Right. I did. <laughs> um I and I mean I guess he did. But yeah, so I had uh I saw that and I was like, oh, I love stone. Hey, this is what a good I do, one, what I, uh, do. Yeah, I was like, like I just I knew I had a good selection at the house already, so I only ended up walking out with like well, one four pack of sixteen ounces and a box of six ounces. I'm trying to look up the name or, of that sorry, one. Sorry, six pack of twelve ounces. So anyway, uh, the one that I got is my reference that you made. It's Jailbreaks Braheim 
<laughs> double IPA, nice. and it's. I've not had that. Hey, kid. Oh, dude, that's creepy. Don't you like candy? <laughs> All right, that's that's a slightly creepy. Thank yes, you for that. but that's the so the uh, the beer you're talking about is Stone Fear Movie Lions Double IPA, that's and it, it yep. is very good. By the way, I give it a four as well. But I might it, need to go, very go get that one then. It's a big can. <laughs> this in most, yeah. most places I've seen it, it's one of the big like six pounder cans, like big sixteen ounce cans. Yeah, it's, it's good though. I, I definitely appreciated it. Um, Excellent. Well, I will have to uh, maybe head back there this weekend if I get time and pick up what I saw. Um, so, yeah, this one is the uh, Jailbreak Brewing Company. They're Braheim. Uh, like I said, double IPA. It's a nine percenter. Uh, hazy, hazy double. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, it's 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 very like hazy double IPA ish, if that makes sense. Like it, it's it's not. It doesn't necessarily stand out to me compared to some of the other ones I've had recently, but it's very good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jailbreak's another local Maryland brewery, so shout out to them. I had a couple of Jailbreak uh, Punishers before at dinner tonight, so we're good to go. Uh-huh. All right. All right, so we're going to flip this flip the script tonight a little bit and uh, and let you, let you lead the show. So uh, have at it, bro. <laughs> Okay, how do I do this? All right, uh, just kidding. I mean, you don't know. So how to we'll talk. start off. Liar. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss for words for once. So I, I don't know what to do here. Um, yeah, it's uh, it was a bad, bad week last week. Um, mostly for injuries. I mean, we we talk about injuries every week as it is, but this week we really are just going to divulge into everything because there were so many bigger name players that really had an issue or got injured or whatever, saw ghosts, who knows? But um, yeah, we're just going to just flip it around here and we'll start off with a couple of headlines. Uh, Week eight buys, by the way, only two teams this week, Baltimore and Dallas. Um, Basically, just change the first letter. The last two letters are the same for their three-letter things. And I digress. Headlines. All right. Two uh, two big trades to talk about here. Um, we have the 49ers traded for Emmanuel Sanders. Um, I forget what they gave up. I think they gave up like a second and then got him and a fourth back or something like that. Yeah, maybe a yeah, second I, and a I, fifth, or a third and a fifth. I didn't write it down. It wasn't super. I don't know for what we're talking about, but yeah. But I mean, what 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 does this do for for Jimmy G? I mean, I mean, so obviously for Jimmy G, right? I mean, so the 49ers passing offense has been struggling big time all year. We all know that it's been a heavy run offense. Um, I don't know if getting Emmanuel Sanders is going to make him is going to make Jimmy G a legit, you know, streaming quarterback at least. Like it's clearly not going to make him a top twelve. There's just not enough there, um, and Sanders isn't a big enough playmaker or a big enough difference maker, I should say, to promote him to that level. Now against very lesser teams, maybe you look at him at this point. Um, but I, I'm still probably not really relying on on him more times than not. Uh, yeah, Jimmy G's just not just not somebody that I, I really care to care to own at this point ever. Yeah, I mean, what do you what do you think it does for Sanders then? Kind of the same deal with without yeah, them you know, really. So for Sanders, Sanders was attack. was a guy that you know I was relying on a couple of leagues. Granted, a couple of them were dynasty leagues or like really deep leagues where I got Sanders late because of the injury uh, risk. Um, Sanders was a, you know, at, at worst, a, a wide receiver three, I think going forward, you're looking at kind of the same value at, at best. Um, it's, uh, the, the thing I'll say about, you know, look, we all know Flacco wasn't good, right? And he's been terrible. Um, and, and we saw last week on primetime, just how bad he really was. I mean, he looked completely lost. Um, more to loss than Sam Darnold. So <laughs> what's that say? <laughs> uh, it was bad, hard. dude. It was that's really bad. Very hard to do. So, so yeah. I mean, it. it as far as, as 
as far as Sanders, you know, I, I think you're probably still still throwing him out there as a as a wide receiver three type flux receiver and just hoping for the best. You know, he's gonna be their top target guy. Um, the rest of the players on on that team have just not gotten it done. I mean, you know, on the slide here, we're looking at Sanders has six targets in four of the first seven weeks with 60 plus yards in each of those games. The Niners have had five plus targets in a, in a game just four times. Debo Samuel twice, Dante Pettis twice. Um, and the six, Niners have had 60 yards in a game three times. Samuel once, Goodwin once, and Kendrick Bourne last week. So, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. So Sanders is going to be the guy, you know, but it's just it's also tough for just receivers to move teams mid midseason, right? I mean, you got to learn the whole route tree. You got to get on pace. You got to get on the same page with the, you know, with the quarterback. And it's just, you know, the timing isn't going to be there right away. So it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough transition for Sanders. So I, I'm not yeah. totally relying on, but maybe flex at best at this point until he proves otherwise. Okay. Um, I mean, what a, is there anybody else in Denver besides Cortland Sutton? I mean, yeah. you have to think that this kind of gives him a boost, but yeah. does it with Flacco? <sighs> yeah, I mean, look, Sutton's already been pretty good, um, arguably better than Sanders at this point. Um, so, so I think Sutton, you know, logic says he's going to get more targets, but he's also going to probably see more coverage so it's always kind of the you know which side of the coin is better i, I don't know it's it, it's gonna be hard um you know we, we, we did see him struggle when sanders was out last year granted that was his rookie year so maybe he's learned um and it, it, I, I still like him but I, I i think i still kind of put him in that like wide receiver three range i'm not really gonna just be like oh man he's a man he's like a wide receiver one wide receiver two guy now uh eh. Hold your horses, like pun intended, by the way, with the Broncos. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> woo, woo. yeah, I've been drinking, so um, <laughs> yeah, um, it's just, it's just one of those. Just you know, don't go get too overexcited about about Sutton. He'll have yeah. some games where he goes off, but I think more often than not, he he will just be the same old guy that you've had all year. The guy who probably gets the biggest uptick is Deshaun Hamilton. Um, yep. Now, he'll probably catch, you know, six passes for 35 yards every week because that's just kind of what he does, right? I mean, Joe Flacco likes to basically hand the ball off to his receivers. Uh, guys like that, at a PPR league, man, that's 9, 10, 12 points every week. You know, that's going to be solid. That's a flex wide receiver three range receiver. Yep. Um, and if he lands in the end zone, you're good. Uh I'm still, you know, I would pick him up in deeper leagues, but I'm not starting him. Uh, he He's a guy that, you know, you're looking for depth. You're just looking yeah. for guys that are useful at this point. Depth um, and or bye week filling. Exactly. I mean, next next week is a pretty bad week for buys. Yep. Uh, week we 12 is another up, right? bad week. Yep. I think, yeah, I think we got a sixer next week and then maybe a four. I mean, you got some big teams yeah, on week we got 10, some, though. We got Philly, big, New England. Is Philly um, big anymore? Well, sorry. Probably not. Sorry, sorry, probably, not trying to dig, man, not. but <laughs> they've been hey, brutal. They've been brutal. They, they're digging on their own. I mean, it, they've been brutal. I was, that's kind of the other headline that I, I didn't even write it down in here just because I don't even want to talk about it. Um, but let's talk about it. So the Eagles, again, have an anonymous person within the clubhouse bitching and moaning about Carson Wentz. And it's like, all right, we already heard this story, you know, in the off season as it is, they tried to pin it on Alshon. You know, I don't think Alshon has, you know, bad things to say about, about Wentz. Um, and now they're trying to pin it on him again. Uh, so I don't know. The whole thing is just a mess. They, they've lost two big games, badly to teams that are beatable um, if they could play at 
the level they're capable of, which they clearly haven't. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's it's going to be an uphill battle the rest of the way. I mean, so, aren't they missing a bunch of offensive linemen? And they're you know they're struggling there. Yeah, I mean, there. they definitely have str- some injury issues. They Deshaun. Have- Deshaun's, Deshaun's killed them. Deshaun's huge. Like that that I mean, that was huge. That offense was clicking when he was in. And it's just not that even Deshaun's game, awesome, right? It's just that yeah. he's just a he's just a difference maker. He stretches the field. They don't have that guy anymore. Aguilar, Mr. Alligator Arms no, is clearly not the guy, like this, right? Trying to fucking catch a ball. Like he didn't I mean, even reach for it. Happen. What happened? I yeah, I have no idea. So I, yeah, yeah, you got that. And I mean and I then, and I was trying to give him some credit a little bit on on Twitter. I was talking with a couple of guys that, yeah, that I saw this conversation. You know, that we talk with uh, Seth Klein and and uh, yep. Brian Drake. So and you know, I went back and looked at it, and it's like, yeah, all right, he he should have reached out a little bit more for that. You know, when I was watching the replays during the game, it's like I don't know. I felt like it was like, well, maybe it wasn't completely him. It was kind of a shitty pass, but no. He just didn't he didn't try. He didn't even try. The ball was right in reach and his arms went like he had like ninety degree angles with his elbows to go ahead to the ball. It was like, what are you doing? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that, I don't know. I feel like this team's too talented. Even Wentz is too talented. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to yeah. take a page out of the out of the Vikings playbook and go, we're just gonna call out our quarterback and see if it works, because it did for the Vikings, clearly. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, dude, I hope it does. I got once in two leagues, and I really need him to I step know. up and be good because my teams are—they're not totally struggling in those leagues, but they'd be a lot better if I had Wentz, you know, putting up twenty points a week. Right now, he's putting up like fourteen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's not great. So. No, I mean the biggest the biggest takeaway too is after each one of these losses, they've cut the dead weight, so to speak. They I can't even remember who they dropped. After after the Vikings game, they dropped, uh, I guess, a former Redskin and teammate of Kirk Cousins, who was trashing him before the game and giving him extra motivation. And it's like, okay, great, you know. And then he blows up against them, and then they cut Orlando Scandrick and somebody else, you know. And Scandrick played against his his old team, you know, last uh, last Sunday. And he was kind of invisible, but he's he's logged a lot of minutes since they brought him in. And they don't have a lot of depth in the backfield. So I, I don't love that move, but I, I understand it. Um, and, you know, Skandrick's not like, you know, Josh Norman out there in his prime, really, because I don't think he's that good anymore. Um, but, you know, whatever. So moving on. Uh, enough about that. Yeah. Mess of a fan. <laughs> I, the last thing I want to say about that is, is you, you kind of wish the Eagles would figure out what they want to do with this running game, and I think that doesn't help yeah. anything at all, right? Like trying they, to they swap in to. like three or four guys just doesn't work. You know, one or two might be, maybe. <clears throat> Josh Howard, you, you can have plotter, success dude. with two. Josh Howard's a plotter. Sanders is the guy, but he just doesn't seem to be getting it done on the ground either. But he's good in the passing game. He but is. They just. I don't know. They got to figure out what to do with the, this run game. This is not working. So yeah, unfortunately. so we'll see. We'll see what happens in the trade market if they go out and make some kind of a splash. Uh, you know, Howie Rossman's done it in the past, and I think he can do it again. But we got to wait and see. Point. I I don't know. I mean, they could turn into sellers. You know, after this weekend, uh, if they if they get trounced again, so. Nope. So speaking of trades um, and getting trounced uh, or being the trouncer, New England traded a second round pick to Hotlanta for Mohamed Sanu. Uh, what's this mean for Sanu? And, and what's it mean for Calvin Ridley, Julio, Hooper? I mean, do they have any movement in value? I mean, let's start with Sanu himself. Yeah, so Sanu, I'm, I'm, I think... Uh... This is a better football trade than it is going to be fantasy trade. Um, yeah. And I'll explain. So, in football, like, right, the Patriots get a guy who is reliable. They can, you know, he'll have his one or two games because that's what the Patriots do. They'll just kind of target him a bunch of times. And, and that's, you know, they'll make matchups work for him and it'll work. And Sanu is a good professional receiver. No doubt about that, right? He. Had good games in Atlanta. He had bad games in Atlanta. He's going to have more bad games in the, in New England. 
And it's not because he's going to get any worse. It's because the system doesn't do that for him, right? It's just, that's what the system will do for him. Um, as far as in Atlanta, you know, there's still Ridley, obviously Julio Jones, Austin Hooper, Devontae Freeman when he's not punching people. Um, <laughs> there's, just a, there's still a lot there, right? I mean, still, Sinu's still averaged seven and, you know, almost eight targets a game through the first four games. Um, although it dropped to three and a half in the last three. So was his impact being felt there at the end? Probably not. So are we going to see Julio and those guys' value go up? Not really. They're going to stay the same. They were still already so highly ranked every week, you know, highly coveted every week anyway. Sanu leaving isn't going to do anything except just, you know, reduce targets by, you know, maybe one and a half each person. That's not going to move the needle. Um, so that's that's kind of my take on it. I mean, Sanu is somebody that I think I'm, you know, in deeper leagues. I'll keep him. I'll you see what happens. Maybe he jumps Dorset in the in the death chart at some point. But it's just kind of like, you know, I think it's still, it's really tough to move teams as a wide receiver as it is going to New England. As we have seen many, many times because they've tried this. It feels like every year to pick up a receiver during the season. Yep. It normally doesn't work out midseason, and they end up cutting the dude. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, they've I, wanted Sanu for a while, though. So they, I don't think they're going to cut him, but I'm just not sure how much of a role he will have, especially immediately. Yeah. I mean, I feel like he's he's going to kind of turn into Chris Hogan. Like, he has a place. I, and Hogan, maybe maybe Chris still, Hogan yeah. light. Um, I think he's better than Hogan, though. But yeah, I see what you're saying. I think, I think he's better than Hogan, but. I mean, how many games did we really see Chris Hogan be like, oh, all right, he's the number one guy? Yeah, I mean, a, a few here and there. I mean, there were a few. Did you do that one year? He was a monster. Oh, he was he was awesome. <laughs> but yeah. I think, you know, Edelman is going to be the go-to guy. And Of course. Yeah, he's, you know, he's the he, man. He has been, and he's proven that he's very capable of continuing to be. Yep. Um, Dorsett and Myers. Dorsett's been good when he's healthy, but he yep. he's kind of had like blow up games this year. He's very boomer bust. Um, Myers has been showing some promise, and he's like he's picking it up. And then uh, you, you still got uh, Enkeel Nakio, however the hell you pronounce Nikhil his name. Harry, yeah, who's coming off IR Harry, soon. Who's coming off, so he's the one that kind of that's an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I like him more in dynasty from a fantasy stance. Oh, well, of course. Once yeah. Brady goes away. Like I, uh... I think that'll open him up. I I mean I think he'll he can be good with Brady, but I don't know. Harry I mean Harry hasn't even played yet, so that, that's that's a well, tough one yeah. to say. Like I I don't know. I mean who know we don't even know who the quarterback is going to be after Harry. I mean is it going to be Stidman? Oh god. Oh, god. Who knows, no, right? I doubt I mean, it. Uh, Stidman will play one game, have a good game, and he'll get traded for a first round pick because that seems to be what the Patriots somehow <laughs> yeah, get to do. Why not? I have no idea. Um, I don't know. This this trade kind of surprised me, uh, especially for what the Patriots gave up. They gave up a second round pick for a 32 year old receiver. Um, yeah, but let's be honest; it's probably going to be close to a third round pick. The Patriots, oh, yeah, they're going to are be... probably going to be in the Super Bowl. Oh, if man, not, they know that in the AFC Championship well, it doesn't game. Doesn't matter. End of the season, they're going to be oh, exactly. You know, they're going to be fourteen and two at, at worst <laughs> at this point, and they're yeah. gonna and they're gonna be you know the top pick, and yeah, this is all it's going to be. So whatever. Yeah. So or the you know but, I mean, the top the the last pick right in in the round yeah is what exactly I say. so. So moving on, sort of. Um, yeah. Staying with the Patriots, though, this trade basically freed them up to place Josh Gordon on the IR. He's been dealing with these lingering knee issue, um, and I mean, ultimately, it's it's now 
perceived to have ended his time with New England. Um, it sounds like they're going to release him. Um, I mean, he was mostly unproductive even when he was healthy. So, you know, last year seemed like maybe it was a fluke for not for his talent, but for him in this system. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I, I just think the addition of Sanu really freed the Patriots up to make this move and, and potentially move on from Gordon. I mean, what are your thoughts on, on Gordon getting IR slash dropped? <laughs> um, so it's interesting that you would IR a person and then waive them. Yes. It really tells me that he's not really injured or at least not mm -hmm. IR injured. Um, so this is the Patriots sort of gaming the system. They just want to cut their, this was their way to cut ties with Gordon. They were tired of the in, inconsistencies. May, hey, at this point, like you hate to say it, but maybe there's something else going on with him, right? You know, maybe they, it's just like, he's been late to practice. He's been smelling a little bit of like these, if you know what I mean. And, uh, you know, they're just like, you know what? We're done with you. We gave you a chance. You you failed us again. Uh, you hey, know, we're hey not Josh, gonna... you've been hanging out in the woods because you yeah, smell like right? trees. So it was something, right? I, look, you hate to put stereotypes on people, but he has earned that stereotype. Uh, so you, you never know. Nothing has come out to say that, but I I I I, I bet I'm not the only person to think that. Yeah. Um So. That being said, you know, I think if he does get cut, somebody will take a chance on him. There is no doubt, right? Um, and, oh, boy, we're seeing Case Keenum in the concussion protocol. So, incoming Dwayne Haskins. Row. This game just <laughs> Vikings ends. defense ultimately will be the number one defense in the, in, the, in week eight this year. Uh, so, everybody's got the Vikings defense. Good job. Nice yeah, pick. Yeah, congrats. Um so, I mean, the, the last thing I'll say on Gordon here is quite possibly the best thing, and that is that I held on to him forever in Fantasy Six Pack League, and I finally cut his ass because I was tired of mm -hmm. dealing with his not playing and sucking. And then, friend of the show, writer for the site, Mr. Kevin Huo <laughs> comes along and no, was it Kevin? drops I a 40 was, I spot. It, I thought it was John. No, it was Kevin. Was Kevin? Yeah, either way. I thought it was they Kevin, both love him. So they both really love him. So it, yeah. I and I knew. I knew as soon as I dropped him. I did too. I saw one it. of it them was, like, was gonna oh go God, after him. Somebody's gonna spend too much money on him. Granted, now, forty out of a thousand ain't much at this point. No, right? but, it's really yeah. not. Um but he dropped Cole Beasley for him, which I mean Beasley's it's been, been solid, way dude. better than Gordon this year. <laughs> it's been solid. They do. <laughs> it, it was yeah. a questionable move no idea. from the get go. Sorry, Kevin. And then two I gotta later, call you out. He gets put on IR. Yeah, I mean, you you yes. murdered me in the trade earlier this year with Chubb and and maybe Beasley. I think I gave him you gave Chubb and him Beasley, Beasley for and for Connor and. Kirk, maybe if I still have that turd. Oh, yeah, Christian Kirk, who is hurt? Yeah, who sucks? He has not done a damn thing. Um, hurt, yep, so Christian whatever. Kirk. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's all I'll say on that. Um, next, uh, next IR injury here is is a bit of a bigger blow, and that's Carry On Johnson, placed on the IR after going undergoing knee surgery on Tuesday, ten twenty two. Um, he will be on the shelf for at least eight weeks now. Um, and that likely ends his season. Um, looking at Ty Johnson, JD McKissick to take over right now. And, uh, you know, we, we may see Detroit try to test the waters in, in a, in a trade of some sort as well. You know, who knows? Um, so what's your, what's your take on carry on and then, the backups here. But yeah, I mean, carry on. Not much conversation here. He, he's droppable in redraft leagues. Um, he, at best, he comes back week sixteen. He's droppable. No, don't even don't even waste a spot on him. Um, Ty Johnson is has been a guy who has 
been kind of a sleeper stash, you know, kind of player. If you've had the room randomly in our fantasy six pack league, I have had him for four weeks now. My, my team's been pretty good. Um, I've lost a couple of close matchups to make my, uh, my, uh, my win loss record. Not, you know, I'm like four and three or something like that, but like ultimately I've just, I've lost by like a point and a half and then I lost by like 10 again another week. It's just, it's just been really close. Right. Uh, I could easily be six and two or no, five and two. Sorry. Uh, but anyway, um, Ty Johnson, the guy that I, I think has the potential, he's going to be a, he's going to be the guy there. Uh, he's going to be the one you want. JD McKissick is, is sort of a, a, a deeper, you know, if, you, if you're in a deeper league, why not take a chance on JD McKissick? He's going to be at least like a PPR type of guy. But, you know, we saw it last week. Ty Johnson immediately got 10 carries. And so that he's the guy you want. And, and I'm, I'm willing to take a chance on him. You, you want these running back ones for teams, for most teams, I should say. Not yeah. Miami. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, I I uh, think I was able to get Johnson in one league, but I, I think I went out and got McKissick in another because Johnson yeah. was already taken. I, I mean, I put in claims on him everywhere that I could. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, Detroit hasn't really run the ball much as it is, anyways. So, you know, it's it they're they're a pass heavy team. So, you know, as long as these guys can be somewhat successful, I think they'll have some value. Um, I, I don't know if they'll hold as much as as the hype that carry on did. So but he didn't really live up to that this year, unfortunately. So moving on to our injuries. That was our injuries IR section. Now we have the injuries out slash doubtful section. And we'll start off with, you know, one of the biggest names in fantasy football and football in general, Patrick Mahomes. We we were on air last week when this injury happened. Brutal knee injury, dislocation, and then relocation. Um, you know, like an immigrant <laughs> family, I feel like. But it was bad. Um, yeah, so he, he was a limited participant in Thursday's practice uh, today. And Andy Reid still hasn't closed the door on Mahomes playing, but it's probably not happening. I can't, I can't imagine that he plays. I mean, yes, he's young. Yes. He can bounce back, but that was a bad injury. So, Mm -hmm. you know, the fact that he's even limited at this point is pretty insane. It's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's definitely a testament to his ability and youth. and you know <laughs> yeah and youth. I was gonna say um, healing ability, for us. <laughs> his his Wolverine esque healing ability. I was just gonna ability. say Wolverine too. That's funny to say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're looking at Matt Moore, yeah. career backup. I played okay when he came in last yeah. week. Uh, it was a little rough when he started, but he started clicking a little bit. So. I mean, what do you what do you think about this long term? Are we looking at this three week window, or is this just something I mean, look, like like a Gordon, where he's going to just be questionable week after week after week, and then not play? I mean, I think at this point we we just don't know with Mahomes. Like, I'm surprised to even see limited. Like I said, so maybe it's next week. That's awesome. Yeah, I think you have to take it week by week with these guys. You're not dropping, you know. You know, you're not dropping the the players on this team just because Matt Moore is going to be in the lineup for maybe two three weeks, right? Um, but while Matt Moore is there, guys like Lashawn McCoy get a, a big downgrade. Um, Tyree Kill get big downgrades. These, these guys they get you know Kelsey they get downgrade, but you're still you're still starting Hill. You're still starting Kelsey. Uh, Lashawn McCoy is kind of on that bubble for me at this point, and he kind of always was anyway. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, Damian Williams has been relegated to nothing. So you're not starting him anyway. And so it doesn't even matter with Matt Moore. You know, the, the guys that really get hurt are the, are the um, you know, is, is you know, uh, uh, Robinson, 
and 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 those guys, right? That that were you know always kind of flyer plays, especially in DF DFS, you know the, that type of thing. Who now I, I wouldn't touch them with Matt Moore there. Yeah. So you know maybe they're droppable for the next couple of weeks if if you're desperate for bye week fill ins. Uh, thankfully, this week we only have two with Dallas and Baltimore, like you said. So maybe yep. maybe you don't need him as bad. So you can hang on to him, and hopefully Patrick Mahomes comes back next week, and you're good to go. And and you know you can fill him right in when you need him. But you know if you do need to drop him for bye weeks and things like that, or you know you want to go drop them for Ty Johnson for whatever reason, then yeah, absolutely you do that. Yeah, I agree. Um, so next guy we got listed here is uh sterling shepherd also doubtful um but I, it's very unlikely that he's playing this week he still has not passed through the league's concussion protocol um i, I mean what what's this do this week for him obviously not anything for him but for the other players around him I mean, I think you're just looking at, you know, a, a little bit of a boost for Tate and Ingram. Hopefully he bounces back after a dud last week against Arizona of all teams. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, otherwise, it's, it's just kind of same old, you know, same old thing. Yeah, well, Ingram was another one. I actually didn't list him on here, but I think he suffered I, another injury, too. I didn't um, He is, yeah, uh, unless he's listed below, maybe. No, he is not. Uh, we'll talk about him shortly. I'll get some notes on it. Oh. Ito Smith uh, is out. Speaking of concussions, he yeah. himself got concussed last week, and he will not play in week eight. Um, gives a bit of a boost to Brian Hill, especially with, as you uh, alluded to earlier, Devonta Freeman's fisticuffs. Um, He'll be suspended. <laughs> That that could be big. Um, Brian Hill could be a very hot ad for some teams. I grabbed him in Scott Fishbowl for probably zero dollars, and um, I hope that that pays off because I'm probably starting him this week because my team is absolute trash. <laughs> and um, that's pretty much what I need to do to still lose by fifty plus points. Um, next I do not name see here, Evan Ingram, by the way, on on the injury chart. On, this is Roto World, but I do not see him. That's why I did not listen. Yeah, so. I have uh, on Slack. He's showing up as questionable. I'm sorry, not Slack Sleeper. He's showing up as questionable, oh, but they don't have over from news on it. Yeah, so I think he's fine though. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll leave him off then. So the other questionable, or sorry, out doubtful guy that we got here is Will Fuller. I mean, are we shocked by this? No, not at all. That's why I don't draft him. Come on, Dude guys. Had... He, had, he had one monster week, and now he's hurt yeah. again. Yeah, But he's got three touchdowns on the season. I mean, uh, oh, game. yeah. Yeah, that's right. That, that monster week. Um, <laughs> he's out again with a major hamstring injury. Get your Kenny Stills going. Uh, get your Kiki Kutis potentially no, Kenny going. Stills, Kenny Stills, baby, that's it. That's the man. Stills is he was a huge Stills ad this is week, the guy, man. I got I got John and, Johnson and Stills in multiple leagues. I don't know how the hell it happened. I yeah, my, I my don't, leagues fell asleep. <laughs> I, I yeah, off. I went I went after Stills like after everybody cleared waivers. I was like, why is Stills still out here? <laughs> I was like, all right, fine, I'll I'll take him, guys. Thanks. So yeah, I got I got a handful of shares of him this week as well. Um, injuries questionable. We talked about Sam Darnold already, um, mostly just to make fun of him. Um, I have listed here that it's his toe that came up as the injury. Uh, it sounds like he might not even practice at all this week, which sounded like it was some sort of shock to Adam you know, crazy eyes gaze. Um, you know, he, it sounds like he could be sidelined or he was sidelined for Wednesday's practice. Um, I, I think it might be his eyesight. That's the problem. Cause he's <laughs> too busy seeing ghosts out there apparently. And it's just, 
uh, no clown. Those were all the white he jerseys did, of the New England Patriots. Today, by the way, just so that he's upgraded the full today. He's so I think upgraded. He's fine. Okay, but yeah, this is one of those like, you know, yeah. Hopefully he just bounced. I mean, New England's defense is ridiculous this year. Like I've, this is one of the all-time yeah. great defenses that I've seen. Granted, they've played a whole lot of nobody, but to completely uh, smash teams like this. You've got to have a good team. You got to have a good defense. I mean, even the best defenses don't just rail teams like this. It's crazy. No, but I mean, if they keep at the pace they are, it's bringing back the defense wins championships terminology. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, if the opposing offense can't move the ball and thinks you're a fictional character, then cool. You're you're doing something right. Smart um, quarterback, good defense that goes a long, long way. Indeed. So, uh, Matt Ryan, speaking of quarterbacks, is dealing with an ankle injury. Um, he has not been completely ruled out this week yet. Um, he did not practice Wednesday. I don't believe he practiced today no, either. No, I, I meant to update that, but he didn't practice okay. today either. I didn't think so. I thought I saw that earlier, but I mean, he may not practice at all this week. Nah, he, and and he, granted, I, I mean, I don't know if he needs to. Before. He's he knows this team. He knows this this playbook. So I think he'd be fine missing a week of practice, yep, other than maybe just timing. So if he could just get on, and and they even said that. Like I'm looking at Roto World, yeah, Roto World. Run a world right now. There's even saying like a, a limited day on Friday, like you're kind of alluding to, mm-hmm. would put him on track to start. And I agree. Just you and know, by he, limited, it it really means just putting his jersey on, right? Yeah, looking and, and like, hey guys, and, I, I'm and hitting the showers. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like I wait, wave to the crowd. Hi, guys, come on. Hi guys, clipboard. I'm a clipboard, a clipboard quarterback today. Yeah. So, so it, yeah. it's a it's still in my opinion a risky play when you're dealing with a. An ankle injury, like a wrong step, a wrong tackle, you know, yeah. will just re aggravate it and he's out. So if you've got a decent option, I think you play him, play that quarterback over Ryan. But if you're dealing with, I don't know, Joe Flacco or Matt, or Case or, or Matt Ryan, you're playing probably playing Matt Ryan if he starts. You're risking it. Yeah, uh, that that's what I would think. Yeah. Speaking of risking it, the next guy did actually exactly do what you just said that Matt Ryan could do, and that's go in, play for a snap or two, and then decide, <laughs> eh, Angle I'm good, guys. Suck. David Johnson, you f***ing turd. Um, I would censor myself more, but that's no fun. Still dealing with this ankle injury. Um, he he's still potentially has the back injury on top of that, but he absolutely decimated and killed his fantasy owners last week by being starting uh, of the game and and not doing anything in it. Um, I, he just bailed immediately, and I get it. You want to protect yourself. You want to do what's best for your body. Cool. Not what best for, you know, the fantasy owners that dumped a first round pick on you. So, thanks for that. Um, the also interesting thing here is that the Cardinals went out and signed Alfred Morris, your boy, mm-hmm. and Zach Zenner. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what it is now. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Zach Zenner. Uh, so that that points to Johnson potentially not playing, and I will give you props. You called the Chase Edmonds last week as your sleeper pick, and Boom. he s- destroyed me for my bench thanks to David Johnson being uh, in I my was starting say, spot. I, I had him on the bench everywhere, so yeah, it didn't do me any good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, did everybody as soon as David Johnson's healthy? You're like, Psh, throw yeah, him on the like, bench. All right, you can't no do it. I I almost did play both of them. But I think I stuck with Jamal Williams in I my flex who I spot. Told. I actually and told I was like, one, eh, I'm good with this. I actually told one person no. to start him because their other option was just garbage. And I was like, you know what? Edmonds has at least been okay. 
even with yeah. you know, he's been flux worthy, right? With with DJ in there for the last couple of weeks. So I went, you know what? Screw it. Throw Edmonds in there. And I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> Didn't expect that, but I'll take yeah. it. Uh, so. the, the, the best possible part about me starting Johnson over. Oh, yeah. It was Kenny Drake. Uh, was another option. And I was like, Nope, you're starting Edmonds. Oh. <laughs> Why do you even oh, have Kenny Drake yeah. on your team? Drop him now. What are <laughs> right. you doing? That's exactly what I said. Unless you play in like a 2014 no league idea. or something. No idea. No idea. Um, but yeah, my, my buddy I played against, we, tied by him playing Dion Lewis, who has done absolutely nothing but breathe on the sidelines this year with his point two points and my David Johnson with his point two points. <laughs> but I, I I had to laugh at that and and I ended up winning that game thanks to Mike Nugent and the New England defense coming through and way outscoring my deficit plus uh, Crowder's 6.6 points. So, nice. anyway, back to injuries. Oh, yeah. Let's um, on, man. Chris, Chris Herndon, he's getting in some limited nah. practices, but is he returning this week? I don't know. Nobody knows, man. If he plays, probably put him in because nobody has, nobody has a good tight end anymore. But yeah. Otherwise, I mean, I feel like. I'm not cutting him because there's just nobody left. <laughs> No, you can't call him at this point. Chris Herndon for three weeks. I've never had two tight ends on the team ever. I do now. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, I. I mean, they the Jets need to just play in the white jerseys the rest of the season, and their their team might actually catch some balls. I mean, Sam Darnold seems like he wants to just throw it to the white jersey team. So, <laughs> hello Jets, come on, make this happen. Yeah, you got to play to your players' strength. So, um, George Kittle is questionable. He's still dealing with this groin issue that he's apparently been dealing with for about three weeks now. Uh, he was a limited in Thursday's practice, but I mean, he's probably going to play again. Um, he has, I believe, I think it was 11 catches on 13 or 14 targets the past two weeks and 140 some yards. So, pretty solid production out of out of you know the number two or three tight end off the board um so yeah i I think he's gonna play he's got a bit of an uphill battle against carolina though uh their seventh ranked d so moving on to the possible returns yay we're coming back uh maybe (laughs) um the biggest maybe of this guy's that we have listed here is Drew Brees. Um, He's been out for weeks with the thumb injury. He was a limited practice participant on Wednesday. I did not get a chance to see if or what he did today. Uh, He still has an outside shot at returning this week, depending on how the rest of the week's practices go. Now he he's has said himself, he's not a hundred percent, but he, uh, you know, he could get out there and they're playing what Arizona this week. So not, not a difficult matchup, but at the same time, you don't want to put a guy like Drew Brees out there in a game. You can win with Teddy Bridgewater. He has been very good um, in, in place of Brees. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, him, him and Kyle Allen, both are, are, are they, is Allen still undefeated? As the, uh, I, think, I think so. As a starter? I mean... I, I think so, yeah. Talk about the next man up syndrome Holy crazy, this year. Man. They would never, uh, it's never, nuts. I would have lost a lot of money on that bet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens with Breeze. Uh, his teammate, Mr. Alvin Kamara, uh, is currently questionable as well. He did not practice Wednesday. Uh, New Orleans did release recently signed Zach Zenner, who I just talked about going to Arizona. Now, interesting that they signed the guy who played one week on the team that they are now playing this week. Was that a Belichick esque move? 
I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what kind of loophole there is mm-hmm. this week. So, you know, that, that could signal the return for Kamara this week. I, I hope he does. But again, probably a winnable game. Let Latavius Murray have another week to try to shine and and just rest Kamara. I mean, th- there's no need to rush him back either. Uh, the last guy we got here, Sammy Watkins, is probable. He's missed the last two weeks, and he left early in week five. I think he only had maybe three snaps or something in week five. Um, I believe it's a hamstring he's dealing with as well, uh, or was. He practiced fully on Wednesday, should be available Sunday night, barring any kind of setback. So, any uh, expert analysis on these guys here? Not really. It's just injury news, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, don't really have anything for Scott Fishbowl waivers. We already kind of talked about the guys that are hot coming out. Yeah. And at this point, I don't most really feel like a lot guys... of people have money left. Well, and most of those guys were owned anyway in those yeah. leagues. You know, they, that's, yeah. that's a deep league, so those guys were all those guys were all owned. So, not a big deal. All right. Well, let's uh, let's jump in here and finish things out with our week eight picks. We have our highest scoring, low scoring fantasy games. Who you got highest scoring? Go. So I'm going. Cardinals and Saints. Uh, you know, I, I, I obviously the the Cardinals was a good defense to pick on. Uh, the Saints have been, you know, they've been good, but believe it or not, they've actually been kind of middle of the road when you really look at like DVOA and things like that, especially in the passing. Um, I I think the the Cardinals had a bad game last week. They're going to come out firing on all cylinders this week and and make this a ball game, and it'll be pretty high scoring. Yeah, I like that. I like that pick um, for the most part. Uh, my pick here for highest scoring I is Giants. What's that? I see. <laughs> Do you see why my I most see. part? <laughs> uh, I'm going Giants at Detroit here. Um, you know, Giants, aside from Sterling Shepard, Tate's been playing well for him. Ingram sounds like he's healthy still. They have Saquon back now. You know, Danny Dimes is dropping dimes, so we'll see what happens with him. You know, he's getting more comfortable in this offense now that he has his weapons to deal with. Um, Detroit mentioned it already. Carry on is gone, but you do have uh, Ty Johnson is capable. You got McKissick. You got all these receivers. Marvin Jones blew up last week. So Stafford's going to throw the ball, and uh, this is going to be this is going to be an interesting home game for them. So who you got lowest scoring? Uh, so I'm going Chargers and Bears. I mean, the Bears isn't what they used to be on defense, but they're still really, really good. The Chargers have been yep. struggling. I just read a report before this thing that actually um, Keenan Allen's dealing with a hamstring injury. So who knows Ooh. what that means? Um, Not good. So. I mean, the running game with Melvin Gordon has not come back to life, and they're another team that has a lot of injuries on the offensive line. It's just not good there. So we're, I think we're getting a real low-scoring game on the Chargers side, and then on the Bears side, that, that offense is just kind of blah. I mean, yeah, you're going to look at the final box score and see they scored you know 20-some points last week, and you know, Trubisky had a 29-point fantasy game or whatever it was, but it was a lot of garbage time. So yeah, I, I I'm just not I'm not feeling a, a big a big game on either side here. Okay, all right, yeah, I can see that. Um, I I did like that game as one of my picks, but I went with Carolina at San Fran. I like that one. This is going to be a defensive battle, I think. Um, I mean, you still have really big names on the field between McCaffrey and Kittle, assuming he plays. Um. We already talked about San Fran's passing game, though, overall being kind of disappointing and them being so run heavy. Uh, I do think Carolina can stuff that run down a little bit, though. So, you know, they've been really, really good on defense this year. And, I mean, they've been good on offense, too. But 
San Fran's defense is is top notch right now. Yes, so that's that's going to be a, a low scoring game in my mind. I feel you. So, all right, let's move on to sleepers and busts here. I mean, my sleeper quarterback here is going to be Teddy Bridgewater. Um, this is, of course, assuming Breeze does not return, which I don't think either one of us is, is expecting. And they're facing Arizona. I'm done. <laughs> all right. I mean, there's no more analysis. It's, it's Arizona, right? You got you to pick on Arizona at least once. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pick on Tampa Bay, though, and pick Fair Mr. Enough. Ryan Tannehill. Tampa Bay has given up 10 touchdowns in the last four games. Eight of those touchdowns have been two backup quarterbacks. Uh, the other two came from Jared Goff. Um, and they have also given up 300-plus yards in four of their last five games uh, with Goff only having the two touchdowns, but what, 517 yards, I believe. So uh, Tannehill had a nice game as the starter last week. And I think he can keep it rolling this week against a very suspect defense. Who you got for running back? So mine's going to be Daryl Henderson. Uh, I believe Brown has already been ruled out. Uh, so Gurley's still there. So Henderson will take a back seat to Gurley. But, I mean, as we've seen, it's been a pretty split role. Uh, for that for that backfield, and you know Henderson's capable enough to to do some damage. Yeah, I think so. Uh, my running back pick, I've already mentioned his name a couple of times. I'm going with J.D. McKissick. Uh, no carry on equals much more opportunity for him and Ty Johnson, but Johnson's obviously rated a little higher here. But the Giants are very weak against opposing running backs, and uh, I think McKissick's going to be very involved in the passing game overall. Uh, filling in for for carry on with with Johnson getting more of the rushing touches. So with that being a pass heavy team, I, I like his upside this week. Yeah, fair what enough. You got for a receiver. So my receiver is Jacoby Myers. Uh, you know, people I think are a little overreacting to Muhammad Sanu showing up and I think that Myers will take a back seat to him, but the guy's been there for what three days. I don't think Sanu's going to get enough in in the first week there in New England to to push Myers off the off that off that spot that he's got right now. And you know he's been good. He's got a solid matchup. You know, uh, I'll still roll with him. And if I yeah. if I need a flex flex receiver, yeah, I like that pick too. Um, I'm going to go with AJ Brown again sticking with the the beat down on Tampa Bay uh, <laughs> but the the news that I read earlier today courtesy of, of ESPN was talking about how horrible Tampa Bay is against the opposing wide receivers that line up on the left side and Brown has lined up there I think it was around 42 percent of the time um, so that that's his majority side it seems like. Um, I, I think he's going to light them up. So look for a big, big game with him and, and Tannehill both at the helm. Yeah. So, uh, my bust here, we're moving on to busts for quarterback. I'm going right back to Aaron Rodgers. Like I know Aaron Rodgers was incredible last week, but, uh, you know, Kansas city, they're not great on defense, but they're not terrible. They're kind of middle of the road, really, when it comes down to it. Uh, they can pressure quarterback. Rodgers is even in good matchups before this past week, just hasn't gotten it done. So I'm thinking Rodgers will go back to the way it was overall this season. And, you know, he's being a little overranked after one giant week because it's Aaron Rodgers. And everybody's excited. Yeah. Yep, that's a that's one of the ones I was looking at going with, but instead I went against your highest scoring game, Kyler Ooh. Murray. That's my and <laughs> some or whatever the hell I said ten minutes ago. I can't remember. Um, thanks, Beer. Uh, you know, it is a great matchup for him. You know, New Orleans is not good against opposing quarterbacks. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, correct. Um, but Murray really struggled in his last juicy matchup last week against the Giants. 
it, will it be two weeks in a row? I don't know, but we have 10 names to choose from. And one of them is <laughs> Gimpy and injured. The other one is the one that you picked over my better judgment, I guess. I don't know. I didn't really love the picks this week. So oh, that's good. man. I'm going to go with Murray. Fair enough. Fair enough. So my running back here is going to be Sony Michelle. He's been all right, you know. He's been a little bit of a hot streak. Got a bunch of touchdowns last week, so so that definitely helps. Um, my feeling here is just that like New England doesn't seem to give the ball to the same running back two weeks in a row, is what it feels like. So yeah, I'm just going against history and thinking Sony Michelle will disappoint. I can see that three touchdowns last week, zero this week makes sense. Um, could be the James White show finally. Doubt yeah. It, but, yeah, but we'll see. So uh, another doubt it is Nick Chubb. Well, because New England defense. That's yeah, it. fair enough. <laughs> that's that's all I got to say. All right, my receiver here ripping through this. I like it. Uh, Marvin Jones. This is another guy. Like, I are, are we really getting super excited off of Marvin Jones, who scored four touchdowns in one week and has done like nothing otherwise this entire season. Um, What's up, Will Fuller? Right. Uh, so just kidding. I'm not wishing injury on Marvin Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, the AJ Jinx is in fact, bro. He dropped Josh Gordon. <laughs> the dude goes on the IR. <laughs> like, That's true. That <laughs> is true. Life. I thought about that. I've had enough I of this. I, I mean, I was. I, I sent you a text earlier asking about is it time to drop DJX? Asking for a friend. Yeah. Um, it may be the friend who has the scary jinx. So I, I don't know if I can drop him because then the Eagle season really is over. Right. Yeah. So again, just Marvin Jones. Uh, like, I, th- I just think he's getting a little overhyped for. You know, coming off one gigantic week. Just, just you know, don't overreact, everybody. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it is a good matchup, but I, I, I can get on board with that. I think it's going to be more the Kenny Galladay show this week. And, uh, you know, as I said, J.D. McKissick. Uh, my receiver is Mr. T. Y. Hilton. Um, Denver has been really good against opposing number one receivers. They've only given up one touchdown on the year to an opposing number one receiver. And that was last week against Tyreek Hill. Um, They have given up four total touchdowns, but it's always the other receiver getting it. So I I just, I could see a down week from Hilton this week. Um, I, I pretty positive that the Colts will win this game, but I just think it could be a, a, a down week for Hilton. So moving on defenses, what you got? So this didn't work out for me very well last week, but I'm going back to Detroit Lions. <laughs> Man, they got smoked. Um, <laughs> I guess the team that can't put up more than 16 against the Redskins right now. So at least I think I knew something last week, but as we got all tell, last week was just crazy. Um, so yeah, Detroit this week um, is going against the quarterback who saw ghosts. I'm thinking this might work out well for me. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, it could. It definitely could if they're going to be wearing the uh, the white jerseys in there's Detroit. Also, there's not a lot of good options for defense streamers right now. Yes. Yeah, it's it was pretty barren. So if I was on um, this on like Tuesday, I would have said Pittsburgh. But they're well, that's like the problem. That's what I did leagues, two so weeks ago or whatever, and picking Philly before they got added by everybody of um, when they went up against the Jets. So yeah, I'm going with uh, with Indy again. Uh, I, I think their defense will have a, a solid game here. They are just at our cusp of ownership with 40%, at least when I looked at it earlier. Maybe it's gone up. Don't care. <laughs> I hit the I hit the mark when I needed to when I wrote this up. Um, Cheater. Now, now their defense <laughs> already has three-plus sacks in four out of their six games this year. Uh, Denver just gave up nine, nine times, nine sacks, and a defensive touchdown to Kansas City in Week 7. 
Kansas City Thief has been uh, up and down. But um, I, I just think Indy's going to put this together. Like I said, I, I think they're going to win this game pretty handily. They can get the Flacco. They can sack Flacco. Um, might as well just change his name to Sacco. He might actually challenge Deshaun Watson this year for most sacks. That's that's a, a call out. Go ahead and write it down now, and we'll revisit at the end of the year. It's very possible, man. Uh, the so- only way that that won't uh, that, that that will be null and void is if Flacco gets benched for Drew Locke once he's healthy. Yeah, which, but, which might be coming, know. but yeah. Maybe I'll hedge the bet and still say it could happen. Hi, <laughs> man. Right, man. Well, I think that concludes it for us. Uh, so I don't have anything else. You got anything else to add? No, nah, man, I'm good. Um, the only thing I would like to uh, comment on again with this Jets and the Ghosts and the Laven is Adam Gase being on the mic'd up was was probably one of the most phenomenal things I've seen just under his interview with the crazy eye twitching wherever the hell he was going maybe he was seeing ghosts in that meeting I don't know <laughs> but he you was just so like that ever okay so you know done some bad things it's all right you know we get the ball back in the second half <laughs> let's uh Let's clean it up from here and let's start. Okay. All right. Just get out of your head. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right, man. All right. Well, good luck, everybody, in week eight. Uh, Hit us up on Twitter and we will talk to you next week. See you. Peace. (laughs) You and your creepy character. (laughs) 